Hello and welcome to Smith Family Gaming. I'm Zane, your host, and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing. Without Roland. He didn't want to do an unboxing of paint. He said that that wasn't very much fun. I didn't get to see any miniatures and bleh. I'm like, well, okay, fine. But when you want to come and you want to paint and use my paint, you're going to be all about it. So, whatever. Anyway, so I backed uh, it's a new paint line. Um, it's a paint line by Huge Miniatures, I think is the name of the company. Yep, Huge Miniatures. Uh, I backed it a while back. It just came in about mm, a week ago or so. Um, so I'm going to check them out a little bit. Maybe paint just a little bit with them. I'm not going to give a review for them yet because I haven't messed with them enough. I'll need to paint with them a little bit more, do up some stuff, maybe shit, make some videos of that. You can kind of, if you've seen some of my other paint review kind of videos, you'll see that I do def a couple of videos before that and test things out before I actually give my review about it. And I've got a bunch of paint reviews that I need to get done because I bought a whole bunch of different paints and I've been trying to work on them. There's some that I've liked quite a bit. Most of them I like. I like doesn't really matter. I'm going to like paints mo more than likely unless they're just crap, which there isn't a whole bunch of paints that I just don't like. So why don't you join me at the desk here and we'll take a look at what I Pretty much all that they were offering for paint i didn't get all of their accessories but you know i can always order from them from them again which i probably will i do use quite a bit of their scatter and a lot of their um, uh, flowers and grass tufts and stuff like that i and their uh, powders uh, pigment powders um, so I really like it. Um, I like huge miniatures. I've liked everything that I've gotten from them so far. So I thought I'd give their paint a try. Uh, so I've got some flow improver that came with there. Um, but you know what that is. I should have gotten some of their other paint accessories. They had two more. They had a uh, mixing medium and then I don't know if it was a gloss medium or a glaze medium or something. I'm not sure what the other two were actually, but I didn't get them. I should have probably picked them up anyway, but I didn't. Um, I did get all the paints. There's all the paints. Well, almost all the paints. Blam, all the paints. I believe there's 50 of them or something like that. I can't remember exactly how many. So what, what, what really made me go ahead and pick this up were these two colors here the marine teal and the blue lagoon i mean these colors look amazing they're they're beautiful colors um so that kind of just struck my eye i also really like their uh tree frog green so we're going to kind of go through these real quick uh, i think this is the bag that i'm going through here is kind of the basic set here so um we also have a clover green And then we have Oceanic Blue, Regal Purple, Polar White, White, <laughs> Dark Star Purple, nice dark purple, kind of like that, Reef Blue, Smoke Gray, Solar Yellow, Cardinal Red, Nebula Orange, Sun Orange, another kind of bright there, Pink Blossom, looks like it needs to be mixed up a little bit, I'm surprised they don't have any, eh, they might have a shaker ball on it, yeah they got a shaker ball on it, okay, and anti matter Black, so that's the kind of the base set, so that's pretty nice there. 
Um, then they also have a secondary set that came with kind of natural tones. So you're going to have a lot of your skin tones and stuff like that. So you've got ebony, which I don't know about that. Uh, loam brown. I'm not sure what loam brown is, but all right. Buckeye brown. Okay, I know what a buckeye is. Camel tan. I like the name of that, and it does look like the color of a camel. So that's pretty nice. <laughs> Ochre. Brick red. Now you gotta like the brick red brick layers. <laughs> uh, red mesa. Terracotta. Bone white. I do like a good bone white. And a pale rose, which is a uh, pale pink. Really pale pink. So that's kind of interesting. It'll be cool to check out those kind of colors. Kind of skin colors and stuff like that. So those will be kind of nice to mix and match a little bit. You get the skin tones that you want. And then they have their metallics. You start out with the rose gold. Fool's gold. A copper. Gold. Silver. Bronze. Steel. And iron. And the last thing we have here are their washes. And if you know me, you know I'm not much of a person to use washes, but I'm trying to use things differently. These kind of need shook up, apparently. A ball shaker, shake it up real quick. So we got a dark wash, a light wash. These are kind of separated a little bit. Uh, a green wash. A blue wash, a flesh wash, the wash is really separated. So make sure that you shake those washes up pretty good. They've got a lot of their pigments are sitting at the bottom there. But you know, a couple of shakes and you got it. Yep, all shook up. Got a red wash. Purple wash, Ooh, nice. And then a black wash. Anyway, some of the things we're gonna try out, you see that I've got these uh, nice bases. That's what we're gonna throw our paint down on. Um, we're gonna try out the black ones. We're gonna try out some of these hard colors that never, 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 ever, ever, you know, go up with their stuff, which is red and yellow. Red and yellow are some of the hardest to paint over black with so let's start off with that huh so here's some red i gave her a pretty decent shake and didn't shake real hard nothing seems like it sounds like it's kind of thicker paint which is fine Oop. kind of that's a lot darker than i initially thought and it's pretty thick all right now we'll give a good shake of this yellow and we'll drop a splotch of that right there and that yeah that paints pretty thick which is fine um, so first off we're gonna go side by side here of uh, oh, let's get that in shot there <laughs> we're gonna zoom in a little bit no I guess we're already zoomed all the way in uh, we're gonna do with no water so we're gonna start off with that um, consistency feels pretty good. I'm kind of just swirling it around. It's pretty thick. That first little bit, pretty thick. It's probably just uh, got a little overly thick there. Congealed a little bit, but once you got it mixed up, it's pretty good. Uh, a little sticky right there. Like I said, might have congealed a little bit. That first little bit, we'll splash out another splot in here in just a minute and take a look, make sure. And then we're gonna go over this black. This has been primed in black, so it should work. We're, like I said, this is uh, the test without thin down at all, so. Um, yeah, 
moves on pretty smooth. Um, pretty good coverage over black without being thinned. Um, so, hmm, pretty interesting there. Clean off. I mean, obviously I didn't expect it to actually even be that good over black because uh, normally black's really, really hard to go over with yellow. So pretty surprised about that. Most of the other ones that I have probably wouldn't even do that. So same thing with red, a little congealed right at first. I'm just thinking that it just needs to be wetted down a little bit. Now it's, yeah, there you go, stir it up. It's pretty good there. Nice, the, the colors aren't exact. I mean, the bottles are kind of uh, fogged, I guess. They're not 100% clear, so they make the color actually appear a little um, blunted, I guess. That's not the right word, but uh, we're going to call it blunted. Um, so I'm going to say it's it's probably, uh, gosh dang it, desaturated. Looks a little desaturated because of the white. Oh, look at that red. That red goes on real nice over that black. Nice and thick, smooths out real nice. We'll be doing a couple other little tests here pretty soon. But uh, yeah, that, that that red went over that black real, real easy. So that's pretty nice. I can Now granted, this is not thinned. So, you know, over a thinned, or yeah, a thinner, it probably wouldn't go over quite as well, obviously. But it, it still smoothed out fairly nice. I mean, we'll just leave it right there on the palette for now. You guys can take a look at her. Uh, all right, now we're going to thin it down. Um, we got a drop of water here and a drop of water there. Now we're going to take some of that red, uh, scoop up a big blob of it because it got quite a bit of water. I'm going to thin it down a little bit. Okay, we'll use this other black. Actually, we'll just use the same one. And we'll leave a small line in between the two, or at least attempt to. So, yeah, definitely not as good a coverage. That should be pretty obvious, though. But I don't think that it is that bad. Um, obviously, you need to let it dry and try to go back over it a second time. So, it's not bad, not bad. Pretty good, better coverage than I've seen on some some reds and yellows over black. So I'm pretty, you know, okay with that. And now we'll get a big old block of this yellow, thin it out, thin it out, thin it out. Get it all mixed up. All right. So then we will go here. So, yeah, definitely, you know, probably get it in two coats, I'm, I'm thinking, either way, you know what I mean? It does, uh, you know, change the color quite a bit. Now we'll check over white on all these, these two. Uh, we'll do non-thinned and then thinned. Then I've got one other test next. So, this isn't perfect. Uh, my paintbrush might be a little too uh, damp here. But, uh, you know, coverage still pretty good. Like I said, it's not going to be perfect the first time. Um, so, it's pretty decent. That was uh, non-thinned. Here's some that's thinned. Slightly less coverage there. I'm thinking on two coats after dried. I still think that's probably going to cover. Maybe take a third coat, but I doubt it. The red, I think the red's going to go right over this white. Yeah, pretty much be fully opaque with uh, not being thinned. Yeah, I'm scraping a little bit of it off. Like I said, my paintbrush is a little damp. 
so it's kind of diluting a little bit but you know, I mean that pretty much went right over it pretty nice smooth um, coverage there so so far so good on all this and I figured these were going to be the two biggest trouble colors the yellow and the red so that's what I went with first um, here's the thin and the thin that just about gets it in one coat itself so that's gravy train on both of those looking great now what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of the non thinned and I'm going to try to uh, I'm going to try to uh, wet blend now why I say try to wet blend is because I'm awful at it so if it doesn't work it doesn't work but uh, you know we're going to go with that and I'm going with the non thinned um, colors here because you want them to be a little thicker when you when you do this unfortunately I don't have a bunch of yellow so we're gonna go with that I'm gonna put this red kind of thick right next to it and I'm gonna try to blend it in in just a second All right. you want a, a slightly thin clean brush that's slightly damp and then if I understand right you're just supposed to wet blend it into each other like I said I'm not very good at this so if it doesn't work it doesn't work it's not the paints fault it's probably mine but so far that little bit of that wet blending actually is not doing too bad problem is I tend to go too much in one direction I've I have not mastered the uh, wet blend yet so but truthfully I think that's doing a pretty good job of it I tend to feather a little bit more than I do blend um, now I got my paintbrush way too wet and the paints obviously not working the way it's supposed to it is probably starting to dry a little bit so i think you know if you're good at wet blending this paint's probably going to be do fine for you i think it looks pretty good um we're not quite dry on either one of these yet um so we're going to wait just a minute to try to do this this yellow over here looks like it might be dry so we're going to go back over that with some of this wet do our two thin coats here like they like to say and I assume I don't know it looks like I said you might need a third coat with that I don't know that looks to be pretty full opacity there with the yellow I'm thinking um, pretty dry over here let's check it out here this no this might need a third coat yeah yeah probably gonna need a third coat here with the yellow oh wasn't quite dry enough and it's pulling it away so see that that's my fault there thought it was dry enough but it wasn't so I mean it's it's pretty close I you know like I said two coats three coats maybe with that with the yellow over a black isn't that bad I mean consider I've seen some paints that I've, I've put like six thin coats on and still it's not to full opacity. I think this will probably get it. The, the red, I think it's pretty dry right there. The red, yeah, it's probably got it in, in maybe three coats there. That's pretty good opacity there for two thin coats, I think, over black. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now let's try out some of the colors I, you know, that I liked that, you know, really got me for and it really makes me excited for them because if they're that much brighter than what they actually were in the bottle that means that these are going to be super bright and i'm pretty stoked about that because i really like this uh blue lagoon and this marine teal so let's check out the marine teal we'll put out a little splotch right here 
paint is real thick. So it's it's pretty bright. I mean, that's pretty close to being a little bit brighter. Like I said, that does desaturate it. The bottles desaturate the color slightly because of the, uh, you know, the bottles are kind of a white instead of being a pure clear. And wow, look at that. Look at that lagoon blue. That is definitely a lagoon blue. It's so bright. <laughs> those are those are some some sick looking colors there. So let's you know let's do the same kind of thing. We'll go no uh, not thin and then thin. They do. Uh, they might have gotten a little frozen. You see that in the cold. But that might just be the first little bit. I mean, I don't see any problems with it after I thin it out. And see, after I even mix it up a little bit with the paintbrush, it's about perfect anyway. So, ooh, yeah, look at that. That's nice. That's a nice color. What do you guys think? You think you like that color? I, I'm digging that color. I'm digging that color. Let's go over some black with it. Nice. And granted, this is non-thin, so it went over that black pretty easily. Oops. And now it's yellow. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. Just still kind of wet. We'll just rub it right off. There we go. How about that? How do you like them apples? So, even over the black, looks pretty good. My brush is wet. I didn't dry it off enough. Oh, well. Pretty good coverage, even over the black. All right. And then we're going to go Lagoon Blue. Go Lagoon Blue, you're such a bright, bright blue. I love that blue, actually. That's freaking awesome blue. I'm not sure that I have another blue quite as bright blue as that. And I've got a lot of blue. <laughs> it, it's, it almost seems sticky at first. I, I don't know. Like I said, it, it was really cold the day I got it. I hope it didn't freeze. But so far, I mean, it doesn't really, it isn't really affecting anything that I can see. Of it being kind of congealed like that nice coverage that is a beautiful blue um, yeah love that blue love that blue okay oops got a little on my finger now let's go over some black with it yep pretty good still not going to get it covered in one you're not going to get a lot of colors to cover, um, especially bright colors like this, to go over black real nicely in one coat, regardless of it being thinned or not. But now we're going to go and we're going to thin it down a little bit and put our two drops. Bring it in. We'll go with our marine teal. It looks like it can thin out really, really thin. That's way too thin uh, for what we're doing here. You know, that'd be good for maybe um, when I was uh, glazing or something. All right, we'll go with the black first. We'll do a small thin line. You guys are probably going to get after me because... I'm using way too much paint, way high up on my brush. This is a crappy brush, okay? Not worried about this brush. This is an old brush that I've had for freaking ever, so it'll be fine. Oh yeah, look at that. Goes pretty good over the white in one coat. It's still not perfect, but... But I tend to use my stuff in really thin coats anyway. So now we're going to do this Blue Lagoon. Might not be quite. 
quite as thin as I want it, but that's all right. Nice. Opacity's real good. I, I like the I like the colors. Yep. Looks great. Digging it. Okay. So now we'll do try to do <laughs> once again try to do some wet blending with uh, wet blending that I'm terrible at. So we'll go blue lagoon. Put it on nice and thick. Over here towards the edge. I'm going to do one more color because I'm curious about this purple. I want to see the purple. I want to see the purple. Okay, and then we're going to wet blend a little bit of this next to it. I already got that a little thin over there. That's all right. I didn't go perfectly right onto it. That's okay. All right. Okay. Oh. All right. Here we go. See if I can blend these two together. Probably not, but Kinda. <laughs> like I said, I'm not I'm not very good at blending, but I, I can see where these will, you know, blend fairly well together. And somebody with a, a lot more talent than me will probably have a really good job on on blending these paints together. And these these two paints right here, these two colors are a little too similar. Probably, I don't know if I. I tend when I tend to try to wet blend stuff, I try to wet blend stuff like way different, two way different colors together. Um, yeah, brush too wet now. I'm drug the paints more. But the thing is, is with wet blending, you just go back over that. It, I mean, it, it blended fine. I mean, I don't think I don't see any problem with people using this however they want to use it. Me, I'm going to be the guy who keeps my stuff real thin um, and kind of do kind of a layer thing over the top. We'll even go a little bit more on this here and get it even thinner. And we'll check to see how separated it gets from each other. That's actually not bad. I am pretty happy with that. I mean, that's... Yeah, it's pretty darn thin, and it still has a fine amount of pigments in it. I don't know how much more thinner you'd want to go than that. Maybe a little bit. You could probably, you know, at the point I'm at right now, you probably don't want to be putting it on, you know, trying to paint with that. You know, this would be kind of a glaze area. Even still, though, that's pretty good. So let's glaze over some of this yellow over here and see what what happens here. Yeah, we're definitely gonna be able to get a nice bluish green color over the top of it. Let's see if we can't turn this uh, a little purpley. Got a little too much. Yeah, so looking pretty nice. Made it pretty thin there, and then drug most of it off. Now, it's not really kind of where I would be uh, trying to glaze. This has got a little too much texture in it, and so it's like getting all in the uh, little grooves and not really. You want something a little bit smoother, is where I normally glaze something like this, but. I mean, you could do it with a couple of glazes and really bring out that. But I mean, even still, that that's still leaving quite a bit of that color 
from the two. So that's pretty neat. I'm liking that. Now we'll do my uh, final test here on, I think I'm going to do the, the brighter purple, which is regal purple, because I'm going to be using this regal purple. And I'm probably going to be using that blue lagoon on something different too. I don't really have, like I said, I don't know that I have a, bl a blue, that blue, blue lagoon blue. I mean, that is one bright blue. I've got, you know, all a scale 75, and I don't think I've got anything quite that blue. Uh, I've got a lot, too, so, so that's kind of surprising. And yeah, maybe I do. I don't know. I really like that color, though. So we're going to check out this regal purple real quick. Mm, that's some nice, nice purple. So... Uh, it's darker than I thought it was going to be, but, you know, over a white or whatever. Once again, it's kind of got that congealed kind of thing to it, but once you kind of move it around, it seems... Apparently, the, the baby's upset. Odysseus is upset. He's a little sick, too, so he's probably not real happy. So, unthinned regal purple. Nice dark purple. Pretty dark. Wow, that's nice. So it it's coming pretty good there. Nice, good regal purple. Looks pretty sharp. We're going to thin her down. Try it again. Nice, good purple. I like that purple. We're going to be using that purple for probably... Um, my... Uh, Rune Wars miniature game. And that purple covers over black, which pretty obvious there that it would because black tends to go well with purple. So black and purple always tends to go good to, with each other. Um, and the thinned. And over black, kind of color like that, you know, you're not going to see too much on that. So, liking it all, um, blending that, wet blending that purple with uh, maybe some of that blue would look really cool. Um, let's just do a little bit of that right here on the, on the palette. You know, maybe we can get a little bit of a blend in there. Oh yeah, see, see I think that those two colors there will look really sharp together. You've got, you know, truthfully, I've got a little thing that I think I would love to have be those two colors. So that's pretty neat. So let's go ahead. Uh, I'm going to drop out another little drop of uh, this yellow and then see if it's still pretty congealy. And maybe that's just the property of this paint. It seems really thick, which thick paint is not a bad thing because you can always thin it down to however thin you want it which is fine. Um, yeah, it's still kind of got that congeal kind of feel to it. it. must be something in the medium because I'm not seeing any kind of problems with it. It's not leaving clumps when I paint with it, especially after I thin it down. I mean, it's thinning down and it's perfect after you thin it to where I want it to. It's, it's pretty you know, almost sticky. But, uh, you know, I just paint over a little bit of it right there and I'm not leaving clumps or anything. So, you don't see any problem with it. Um, must be just medium. And those were going to be the, to me, were going to be the hardest ones, the colors that were going to be the hardest to paint over, you know, the black and, uh, and maybe the white. And so far, 
you know, I'm pretty happy with, with what I'm getting here with, uh, you know, two, two coats over the black on, on everything. It's looking pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Um, totally missed right there, but yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to say that these, these paints are pretty good. Um, I'm going to dig them. Like I said, uh, stay tuned on some of my other videos here pretty soon. I'll be using these paints and, you know, by the time I get done using these paints on quite a few models on different things, I'll have a, a full review on what I think of them. Uh, so far so good though. Um, I'm going to have to check out their white. White's always a problem too, to look a little chalky. Uh, it is what it is, but you know, I'm not, you know, if the, if the white's chalky, I'm not going to dock them points on their white being chalky. That's like every white. So, but you know, if you like what we do here at Smith Family Gaming, like my painting videos or my reviews or Roland and I's unboxings or my unboxings when he doesn't want to unbox paint with me, <laughs> uh, make sure that you like and subscribe and tell all your friends about it and lie to them and say, hey, this is the best thing. And tell them that, you know, you want Smith Family Gaming to be the next biggest thing in the world. Yeah, lie to them. It's fine. They're not going to care. They're, you know what I mean? They're going to come in and they're going to view my thing and then they may or may not subscribe, but who cares? I'm not really that <laughs> worried about it anyway. But I just enjoy, you know, showing you guys some things. And, you know, I'm learning with you guys too. So this is kind of an experience for all of us. I'm not a professional or anything like that. So I hope you enjoy watching my videos. And thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.